Right, I've got a hat on because I've got really bad helmet hair again and I uh, can't be asked to put a thing in. But look, I just want to show you something. Look at this, look at this. Is there a better sight than somebody else cleaning your bike? Hey mate, Hello. what are you doing? Somebody's bike. My bike? Yes, your bike. Why are you cleaning my bike? Um, I'm just doing a bit of a testy test on this proper cleaner by ah, Guy Mark. Okay, how much is that stuff? Uh, oh God, you always have to ask me when I can't remember. <laughs> we'll put it on screen about here. <laughs> That's great. Well, can I just say you're doing a stand-up job and Thanks, may, long may it go on. Thanks, appreciate that. No worries. No worries. What a result. Tidying up after himself. Look upon my works, ye mighty and despair. Come on, have a look. Where did you get that hat, by the way? Uh, do you know what? It's the only hat I've got. Sure. I have done already. Oh, that's ridiculous. I know, but it's the only hat I could find. I've got a stupid helmet here. Oh, mate. For, for the relatively short amount of time I spent on it, bearing in mind it's not my bike, it's yours. That's true. It, I, you know, I think it's like quite nice. <laughs> oh, dude. It come up lovely. Uh, so um, now, what do you think? Let's try and stop the wind, wind noise. What do you think of the Guy Martin proper stuff off stuff? I, I think it's proper good. Really? Yeah. Did you like that? Proper good. Proper yeah. Good. Yeah. That's good. Um, the the best thing about it, to be fair, is um, the fact that you don't have to um, get the scent or buy the whole. You know, um, what you got? Like the liquid form. It comes in a tablet. So you buy the bottle once. And then you just buy refill, so you pop it in there, and it's like a fizzy um, tablet that then you fill with water from your own sink. You're not sent, you're not getting sent so much um, crap through the post and and whatnot. So yeah, cool. Very good, yeah. All right, good stuff. That is good, but is it as good as that Pro Green stuff? Well, I wouldn't like to comment. Wow, that's toughy that one, isn't it? Anyway, sorry, mild deviation from bike stuff, but again, someone else cleaning your own bike, priceless. So we're up here at JHS, and the reason is because I'm putting this. And this is an HM quick shifter. Quick shifter for both up and down. I want to see how this compares to the standard unit, which is the reason being because the standard unit is really good most of the time, but then find on some tracks, sometimes on some roads, that the down blipper is a little inconsistent. Um, so we're going to see if this aftermarket to goodie and fix the inconsistency. So Wills is just um, getting busy by removing the standard one and then we're probably going to have to make the rods because one thing people forget when they buy stuff like this is a lot of the time it doesn't come with an actual rod and uh, as I've been told William's excellent at rod handling um, he's going to make one for us aren't you Wills? Yeah. Thanks right. mate. What's that? We'll measure this up. Yep we'll measure that up. And we'll make a rod. Brilliant. Nuts, be gone. Right, let's measure around then. Yeah. This feature is full of innuendo. So we've just removed this, which is the standard unit, and this gets chucked, essentially, doesn't it? Yeah, so we're not going to use that. Yeah. We're going to make a whole new rod, so then, if you do put it back to standard, it's easy. You yeah. Just un unbolt the original rod, and put, your, put it back on. Yeah, exactly. And the difference between this, though, and that, is this is a strain, ga strain gauge item. Are you able to tell us the difference between that well, and a strain gauge? Strain gauge, I believe. On this, are you able, I think you're able to turn it around and use it in race shift. I think you can. I think you can. But I think this is of uh, <coughs> better quality because yeah. it's an aftermarket one, essentially. Yeah, so strain gauge basically means that it works both ways, mm -hmm. pretty much. Uh, like, usually with your old Dynajet one, with your power command, you used to have to either get a push or a pull sensor. That's right. Depending on which way round you had your gear lever. Uh, but luckily with a strain gauge, it works both ways. 
Mm, lovely. Let's go see what length rod we need. You're just saying you have a large selection of rods. Mm. Yeah, so you can see in the drawer here from rear sets we fit over the years, quick shifters, but lots of different length rods, all different mm. applications, and we always check this drawer out to see if we've got something in there to cut down the time. Yeah. But I think we found something that we might be able to work with. Okay. We're going to see how this fits. find our tap that we need. You've been tapping out the thread, haven't you? Yeah, so we're using a M6 by one left hand thread. Mm -hmm. Well, tap, because that's what the thread on the uh, original rose joint is on the gear lever. So I think we're just coming to the bottom of the thread now. See, for anyone wanting to fit this at home, yeah, this is quite a faff. Now, I, I admit some people will probably have little things in their garage where they could tinker around a rod, but. When it comes to fitting a lot of quick shift and stuff, you quite often need a new rod. So what do people do? Do they have to, they have to come to people like you, I suppose? Or? Yeah, so some of the aftermarket products come with a variant of rods, as you can see in our, mm. previously saw in our rod collection box from when we fitted shifters before. They've come with a varying different length of rods. Um, some don't. And, yeah, unfortunately this HM1 didn't come with a rod, so we've had to make one up. Yeah. It's not a problem for us, but... I know there's, there's a lot of, pla lot of places engineering places you can go to if you told them the length and what threads you want it. It's quite simple. Okay. They'll be able to make you something up. Um, so it should be quite a cheap job for someone to get done as well. Yeah, we we get we, we do do them quite regularly. People come and they fit rear sets on mm. quick shifters. We just have to make up a gear rod. Mm. We can make an aluminium on stainless steel, depending on what customer wants. Awesome. I'm up there with you, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't fit kitchens. Well, there you go, I don't feel built. Yeah. <laughs> right. I know where you're at. Right, white one. Thank you. Got all tangled now. Probably should have done this the other way around. I built two wheels once for a PSA. Yeah. And they worked. That's tight. We were about there before, weren't we? That was about right there, didn't it? Is that about right? Yeah. Bit higher. One, higher, one, one notch higher. Probably should have marked this before we took it off. Yeah, that's all right. Would have been ideal with a pen, but yeah. I think that looks more about there, doesn't it? You reckon? Yeah, yeah. I'll take your word for it. I can always change it. Use your parallel. Most sensible people will mark it with a pen. Yeah, but we're in a rush. Like I'm always in a rush. <laughs> Pretty much it, fitted. Mm. So that's that fitted. That's our shift rod. Yep. So we've got adjustment here, we can make it longer, we can make it a little bit shorter mm -hmm. here. Just change our lever height. Now we've got to mount the uh, shifter box in a place and just plug it in. Plug it in, which is just there. Just there. Lovely. Right, she's on. So what we've done is we've velcroed the little control unit with the screen on here, so if we need to adjust it, we can pop it off and see the different numbers, because this is actually set on 50-50, yep. and you can go up and down in levels of sensitivity, and you actually do it by the ignition and the gear lever, don't you? Yeah. You when it comes to the HM. On the earlier ones, we have to hold them, you just got to turn the ignition on, hold the lever down for three seconds, and then when you just press the lever, it changes through yeah. your sensitivity each, each way. I, it's I similar. Think I think that's what you said, is similar yeah, way. Yeah, it's, a, sim it's a similar way. But we're going to ride it around for a while just to see how this shifter fares um, compared to the standard one. So thank you, William. Job well done. <laughs>
Right then, the super courses are now gone, and for a couple of weeks I had the Bridgestone T. 30s on and they're now gone and now Mr. Wayne Wayne hello hello is popping on the T31s here so I'll be able to see how they compare to the T30s now funnily enough the morning you see it's, it's actually looking a bit bright outside but trust me it was dicking down earlier it made me really happy that I didn't have any uh, walkthrough trousers um, but funnily enough, before the supercourses went off a couple of weeks ago, I did actually have a really awesome ride on them. It was piss wet, um, it was cold but not too cold, so it wasn't too dodgy. And it just goes to show the versatility of modern tyres, that even track summer tyres like supercourses, you can still have a right laugh in winter on them, even though you still got to be a bit careful. Um, obviously the T30s went on instantly, they're a better tyre for this time of year, uh, and they were good. You do also instantly notice the a uh, slight reduction in kind of steering capability because of the uh, more, how should we put it, uh, gentle radius of the tyre because it is a sport touring tyre. But they are jack of all trades. I mean, the T30, I've been touring on them two or three different times and track days and all sorts, and they were really, really good. I mean, you know, you need to give them a little bit of respect on track, but uh, otherwise, I'm really looking forward to seeing how these T31s turn out. So once Wayne has put that on there. Right then, first of all, yes I've had a haircut. Secondly, it was by a, a, a K Suzuki GS1000 K5 owning hairdresser. Is there any kind of better hairdresser than that? Top man as well, top man. Anyway, um, right, so what you've just sent, a couple of points of order. Uh, firstly, is that if you buy the HF plant shifter, it now comes with a rod. Um, that was literally about the first unit they had. Um, and they rolled it off, the, uh, rolled it off the, the production line and sent it to me. Now, I will talk about that in greater detail later. Just put the kettle on. Um, uh, second thing to talk about is that the uh, T31 tyres are superb. I mean, they're really superb. Uh, I mean, I had the love to have the, uh, the super courses on, and then I absolutely loved having more period specific tyres with the predecessor to these the T30, uh, but these T31s, just immediately rolling away, it was gopping wet yesterday, there's definitely a step up. Um, what there is also a step up on, I would say, is, is slight sporting pretensions, because um, normally when you go from a super sports kind of tyre to a more touring or a sports touring tyre, profiles are quite different, so you know, steering will slow down a little bit, that kind of stuff, it's not a problem, but you know, just a it's just a facet of their construction, uh, or rather a, an effect of the facet of their construction. Um, these have a lovely rolling rate though, uh, really, really nice. Um, and I've not done too many miles on them, but I'm really liking them. I'm really liking them. Uh, a couple of other things. This is the 1st of February, I'm saying this on. And there might, we think, be a recall coming um, for the GSX-R1000, possibly an EC flash in America. You've, they've already had the, the recall. We have literally no idea what it's about um, or if we're going to get it in the UK yet. Probably, but we are still waiting. Uh, no big deal. Bikes get recalled all the time. The R1 had the entire gearbox, for God's sake, when it came out in 2015. So that's not a problem. Um, uh, oh, one last thing, because I'm going to go, because it's been quite a long one. And, and Andy Parker might complain that it's too long. Sorry, Andy. Um, uh, just to be a bit clearer on my issue with the stock OE downshift blipper, when I say it's inconsistent, what I mean is a lot of the time it's just pom pom that works beautifully. However, sometimes it's kind of clunky when you don't expect it to be. I'm, and I'm not talking about low down in the range because everyone knows you should just, you know, you should, if you're going slow, just use the clutch, even with a downshift blipper, just use the clutch, it's just easier. And it's asking a lot of the system to do it that kind of But, um, you know, sometimes it's just a bit notchy. Sometimes pum, sometimes <laughs> who knows why. Um, maybe that's something to do with the recall. I don't know. There have been a couple of people complained, actually, that uh, they had some issues with their downshift blippers. But of the hundreds that have been sold in the UK, it's two. 
according to Suzuki UK, who've, who've, who've said something about it. Uh, so I'm going to do a little bit of digging on that. And lastly, still running traction control on one, full power, even in the winter. Uh, I'll always like a, to, ride, to run a bike, you know, what it's capable of. And uh, this is capable of stuff. I mean, it'll spin up a bit <laughs> in the wet because having traction control on one allows you to do that. But, you know, it's kind of good. It still shows you how potent your bike is. You're not getting a watered down kind of kind of version. You've still got to be on your toes a little bit because you still have you off. And so the excitement's still there. Anyway, loads more in the next episode. So bye-bye.